Uh, this is JP McDaniel from myeg.net, and right now I'm joined by Trevor Midway Schmidt, the PC event organizer here at MLG. And uh, this year you started out with MLG after you guys signed, and uh, you went ahead and started a WoW division, basically. Why World of Warcraft? Well, I mean, obviously it's the biggest game in the world. Um, you know, over 10 million people signed up, registered to play. So that's, that's a huge audience to start with. Um, we, had a, we had a big audience on Godfrag originally, which is one of the major supporters of uh, the PC circuit, uh, that, that love Counter-Strike. And we'd love to provide Counter-Strike, but I think the audience and the, the interest level in WoW really made it a natural first game to pick because in order to build something as popular um, as the MLG is on the console side, you need a large... Uh, very vocal, you know, not even necessarily just vocal, but just a substantial audience to, to counterweight what Halo is doing right now on the console side. And, and we felt like WoW was a very good opportunity to do that. Uh, so you spoke a little bit about uh, 1.6, and Godfrag's pretty much notorious for being yep. the mecca of 1.6. Uh, can you give us any insider info about any games being added to the circuit eventually, possibly 1.6, or any, anything you plan on doing with 1.6 besides y'all's revival tour? Well, the Godfrag Revival Tour has been one of our major initiatives here in 2008. We've really wanted to give uh, all of the players um, who in our, who love 1.6 the opportunity to continue to play it and enjoy it. And, you know, we have, there's Sevo out there, there's Cal out there, there's other leagues out there, and we don't want to take away from that, but we want to provide more out there for the people to play. And, and I think that it is, like our, our President Lee Chen has said at Godfrag, it's a stepping stone for us. It's something that we are trying to use to show people that there's still interest in, in 1.6 here in the community. And I think that... Um, you know, maybe in 2009 we will see it here at the PC circuit. But again, we can't promise anything because at the end of the day, I mean, we've seen from all these other events that have folded, you have to be able to sustain yourself. You have to be able to get enough sponsorship and enough interest level before you can step out and really, you know, do something as big as the 1.6 community deserves. And, and I think that's something that we're going to be trying to do and, and working with HP to see if we can't get done. So at the at the last stop in uh, Orlando, that was the first stop for the PC circuit. You guys had a, enormous response to the to the stream and yeah. to, to WoW in general. Um, what can we what can we expect this time around that, that can one up Orlando uh, in terms of the stream and everything else going on here at the MLG? Well, the Godfrey TV guys have done an absolutely amazing job. I mean, I think that they looked at what has been done in the past on WoW and just in general. Um, when you look at what they've done with 1.6 and Counter-Strike, and even Source for that matter, and they've really tried to continue to push the edge, and I think that they will continue to do that. Uh, they've got a few tricks in their store here at this event that they're going to be bringing out. Um, I've heard rumors of maybe instant replay style stuff. We'll see what they end up doing. Um, I can't promise anything, but you definitely check it out. I think you'll enjoy the stream. Uh, the level of competition is amazing. We've absolutely absolutely um, been ecstatic with the response from the top end players to come out and play and and we we think that we're gonna have just as strong a tournament here we've got SK coming over and playing and they did very very well um, we haven't seen quite the European interest yet and we, we we expect maybe that to be a little bit better in Dallas but we still think we've got quite an, a, a contestant group from the United States here the best of the best from the United States and it's gonna be a great event so we're looking forward to it all right, so you spoke a little bit about Dallas. Uh, we also, it's also known that MLG also has a Canadian league in Toronto. And also at the finals, both events haven't been announced yet for World of Warcraft. Uh, do you guys plan on having events there, or what's the deal? Uh, well, MLG Canada um, is actually a separate organization than MLG United States. They're two different groups. So the, the Toronto event is actually not necessarily on the direct company path as, as uh, the rest of the circuit is. So for us, it was a natural step just to, you know, go focus on the three events that the uh, MLG, you know, headquarters, I guess would say, um, are doing. And that was, you know, San Diego, here in Orlando, and Dallas. Um, MLG Canada has made some pushes and has, has notified us that they're trying to get us out there. Um, if they succeed, you know, maybe we'll put something together at the last minute. But as it gets closer and closer, that seems unlikely. So we'd love to do Toronto. Um, we at the circuit would love to do it, and we'd love to go out and help out. But at the end of the day, you got to have the prize money. you got to have the money to be able to put it up. And if not, it's not, you know, there's just not really as much of an interest. So uh, at the moment, there's not the support for it funding-wise. But, you know, again, I think we're looking at more stops and more things going on in uh, 2009. Okay, and uh, on the World of Warcraft final, is there going to be one this year, or...? Is Dallas the last stop? 
Uh, right now, there's no organization between the events. Uh, a lot of people are going to see when we announce the seeds tonight, again, this is Friday, um, Friday night at 8, we're going to be doing all of the announcement of the seeds. Those will be random, uh, and random for a reason. There's no connection between those three events. So. Um, the, the events do not have, you know, correlation of any seeds at all. So, again, the sense is this year we decided to do three individual events organized only together by the fact that they're all at MLG events. 2009, we'll look at see what we want to do for a more larger scale organization. All right, so in your latest WOW article, you took a, took a, bun a bunch of hits, I guess you could say, for pretty much putting down the entire World of Warcraft American scene. Uh, this is basically off of what happened over at the Worldwide Invitational in Paris with pretty much no American team besides uh, Serenia, Nelio, and Glorin taking the third place spot. Um, do you really think the World of Warcraft scene in America is, is that far behind Korea and Europe? I don't think behind. I don't think that's the right word. I think at the end of the day what we saw was that the North American scene had such a phenomenal success in 2008 that no matter what you do as a, you know, as a, somebody who follows sports or anything in general, you just can't continue that kind of a trend. Uh, I think I said in my article they were something like 27 and 8 was their record against international scene in 2008 overall or yeah, 2007, excuse me. So here in 2008, there's no way they could keep that up. And the thing we've seen is not only have they not been able to, to even remotely come close to that, they've actually fallen below that. And you look at not only just the, the recent WWI, but also the the the, the uh, our MLG San Diego event, Nihilum came in and did extremely well with a setup that many people didn't expect would work very well. So, I mean, again, that double double melee against that team should have, come, should have been able to have a lot more success than it did, and we didn't see teams do that and pandemic being one of those teams I expected would, would be able to beat Nihilum and they weren't able to do so so I think that it's not necessarily a critique on them I think pandemic and those teams can adjust I just think that they have kind of taken for granted maybe their success in 2007 and expected that to translate and it didn't so we'll see I mean they, there's a lot more events coming up we've got this event which obviously an American team is going to win because they're only American teams um, but we do have BlizzCon coming up looking forward to that um, we have quite a few events. We have a, a Dallas event for MLG and probably a few more events from uh, some other groups like ESL later in the year. And I think the American scene can definitely rebound. I just, you know, you look at that trend and you go, wow, that's just totally different than what we saw last year. So uh, it's an interesting note. World of Warcraft's kind of had a hard time with the, the hardcore esports fanatics. Uh, yeah. They're not really accepting it as an actual esport game. Um, yeah. 1.6 being the dominant esport game. Do you see any correlation between the two, or what? What? What can you say to those hardcore fanatics who keep shunning World of Warcraft time and time again? I think at the end of the day, um, it de depends on how you define esports. I mean, a lot of people define esports as you know a sport. You know, this is a a sport that we're going to be involved in and that everybody enjoys and loves. And then there's other people who see it as like you know, the next you know, the, the next uh, entertainment, you know, whether it be, you know, like CGS is doing or something like that. At the end of the day, the interest level is what determines what's successful. And, you know, we look at the numbers that we did from WoW and we look at the numbers that we did from 1.6 and the interest level is there on WoW. And so I think that that's what matters. The sponsors are going to be involved in that. The sponsors are going to be more interested in being involved in an event where there's more people interested in watching it. So I think that that's the key is, you know, you can argue as much as you want about whether you like it or you enjoy it, but if that many people are willing to watch the game and be involved and post on the forums and show up and, and really get involved with the stream and, you know, watch it and talk to their friends and get their friends on it, at the end of the day, that's what decides it. So, I mean, a, a great example is, you know, people may love baseball and they loved baseball back in the day. But look at the numbers football started to do, and look how big football is as a sport. Well, now people, some people call football our American pastime and not right. baseball. So I think at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you feel about it. Numbers dictate the story. And I think that that's what's happening right now in the WoW scene. All right, and uh, everyone knows pretty much World of Warcraft, 10 million users. Yeah. Do you yourself, in fact, play World of Warcraft? Absolutely, uh, absolutely I do play. I, uh, I have uh, a 70 Druid and a 70 Shaman, uh, a couple other characters I'm leveling right now. My, my uh, Druid is actually, you know, 
six out of eight tier six. So uh, we raid Sunwell and uh, and Black Temple all, almost every week. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I wish I had more time. I mean, I'm here doing these right, events right. and getting ready for these events, so I don't get as much time. But yeah, no, I love the game. Uh, I don't PvP as much as uh, the guys in here, but uh, I do I do do enough to, to know what's going on and I and I enjoy it. So yeah, it's awesome. All right, well, thanks for doing the interview, Trevor. Uh, this is JP McDaniel from myeg.net, and I'm out.